by the way, this, this, this series, it seems like everything I do is like this now, requires a lot of preparation. If you ask Beth how much time I've spent on this, I'm sure I've got 20 or 25 hours in on it this week. Just, just getting this much ready. So it's, uh, it's, it, there's a lot here. And that's because I'm being careful with it, for one thing. And because also I want to make it, I want to make it good for everybody. That's my job. So num number one, global government. Where are we going with this? So we've studied Revelation, we've studied Thessalonians, we've studied Daniel. Now it's time to kind of put all this together and put it together like, like a jigsaw puzzle. You know when you go, to, when you get, guys, when you take your wife somewhere and you go to a state park or something, this is what Beth and I do, and you find a puzzle somewhere and you just, you just put the puzzle together or you're not playing cards or playing poker with your wife and trying to beat her out of money. You just, just try to, you're just put, figuring out, a, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> we don't play for money. I, I would lose my shirt. We, we, we're just going to put it all together like a, like a jigsaw puzzle. And seeing these events in order, I think, should be helpful to you in understanding Bible prophecy. I know they will be, because it's, it's, my wife tells me that sitting back there, right? When she reads a novel, she reads the last chapter first and then reads from chapter one. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're, we're kind of approaching it like that, aren't we? And it's okay. We, we want to know the whole story and knowing the whole story, then we start at chapter one and we work our way through it. Pretty cool, actually. And the, 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 the joy in this for us is that Titus 2.13, we are looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's coming again. What a blessed hope that is. We look for him to come. In the church where I got saved, Cheyenne Baptist Temple in Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, they had a wooden sign out in the front that had been painted by the, the pastor's father, Arthur French. And it said, preaching the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. And I, I've never forgotten that. As a young Christian, as a person who had just gotten born again, all that stuck with me. And the blood, the book, and the, and the, and the blessed hope, that was it, that, in that order. That sign's not there now. I think it just wore out because I keep looking at pictures of the church on uh, Google Maps and it's gone. But... Um, what a joy to look forward to. Before the end times begin, there will be global government. Global government. We're working toward that now. No, you and I aren't working toward it, but, our, but the people in charge of things are. I don't like my illustration here. I wish I'd changed it, but we've got it, and we're going to work with it. The seven-headed, ten-horned beast is in both Daniel and Revelation. Now, we've, we've got some background on that. We've studied the beast, the, the fourth beast that comes out of the sea. We've, we've looked at all these things. We know what we're talking about here. One of them has ten horns. And it's in both in Daniel and it's in Revelation. In Daniel, we read this. Said Daniel chapter 7, verses 23 and 24. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. This is a powerful government entity. It'll, it'll devour the whole earth, tread it down, break it into pieces. And the ten horns of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. He shall be diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings. Let me break that down just a little bit. We've studied it when we looked at Daniel 7, but just again, there's ten horns, ten, ten king kind of entities. Whether or not we would call these guys kings or governors or or presidents or vice or, or premiers or or whoever they might be prime ministers, I don't know. But they will be rulers of their of these entities that they're involved with. They may be treaty or, treaty organizations. They may not have geographical boundaries. We need to be flexible on this because we're living in a world that's changing all the time right now. So here's the language we've got. The ten horns out of this last kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And after them, and, and another shall arise after them. That's Antichrist. That's Antichrist. We'll, we'll revisit this in a little bit. That's Antichrist. And he shall be diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings. So that tells us something about him. I'm going to say this again before we're done. There's going to be ten kings. And one will follow them. And that's Antichrist. He will be diverse from the rest. He's not going to be just like them. And he shall subdue three of them. That means that they come first and he comes second. 
So before he ever shows up, these 10 kings have to exist. There are 10 horns, we'll call them kingdom entities, they'll be, revealed, re, they'll be ruled by 10 human beings. Now, you say, maybe these are demon spirits ruling over geographical uh, uh, regions. I'm sure there are some that do that. They'll be involved in that. But these will be real human beings that you'll be able to know the name of and, uh, and identify by seeing them on TV. The global government must exist already at the beginning of the seven years. I'm going to prove that again, maybe a little more clearly as we, as we move along. How much in advance of the appearance of Antichrist and, and the seven years will this global government come into being? That's unknown. That's unknown. People that hold to this position say, oh, it could be 100 years, could be 10 years, could be 20 years, could be a day, could be three days. In the world we're living in now, it doesn't take much for, for rapid changes to take place. Look at what's happening, as an example, look at what's happening with the global emigration, not immigration, but global emigration of, of uh, people from Africa and from South America, from Africa into the European countries and from, and, and, and from South America into North America, the United States. Uh, it's it's just it's just going crazy. And if you if you're watching anything at all on on the on the web, uh, whether, whether via Twitter or X rather now, uh, or or whatever, you're seeing you're seeing rioting in, in French and Italian and Spanish cities where where these immigrants are coming in, unvetted because they're they're coming in under guise of of of. Uh, of uh, Per persecution. What's the word I want? Not persecution. Refugees. They're being, yeah, they're being refugees. They're move, being moved in with refugees without much vetting, and they're rioting, they're killing, and they're not not all of them. I wouldn't I wouldn't paint them all that way. But there's enough of it that it's that it's happening, and and towns and cities are losing their identities. This is rapid change. This is rapid change. We're seeing it in this country, and they're seeing it seeing it in their countries. That's just a little illustration of how quickly things move, can change. Uh, these organizations, we've right now we've got Saudi Arabia looking like they're ready to make a move similar to what Trump had with the three nations that came in under under the Abraham Accords, where the where the Islamic world is forming new alliances inside the old one, and uh, that's got some of the some of the groups like Hezbollah and uh, and others really shook up because they're less anti-Israel now than they used to be. They're still anti-Israel. But they're less anti-Israel than they used to be, and they're forming their own alliances. All happening very rapidly, and so this is the kind of thing that we can expect to see more of, and it'll have to happen, I think, if it's going to happen quickly. This government will consist of ten horn personalities, whether they're kings, rulers, administrators of some kind, we don't know, but it will be identifiable. Now, I'm saying all this, and you say, can you prove all this? We'll, we'll make some efforts to prove it and illustrate it from the scriptures. Right now, I'm just kind of identifying what we're going with it. Daniel's 70th week, the seven years, arguably begins with Antichrist confirming what the Bible calls the covenant with many. Uh, we talked about that. That'll be the first thing that Antichrist does. The first thing that happens that we can identify when the seven years begins. But before that, this global government needs to exist because, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't know how long it will have existed. A day, a year, a hundred years, we don't know yet. More on that later. Antichrist, interestingly, will not be involved in its creation. The global government, and this is, this is going to be important to us. The global government is, is growing. It's satanic. It's, it's growing on its own. But Antichrist himself as a human being, I don't think he's involved in it. And I'll show you that from the scriptures as we, go, as we go along. And I think there's a purpose in this. I think Satan has a purpose in that. We'll look at that as we come along. Antichrist will not be involved in the creation of the initial global government. We read Daniel 7.24 a minute ago. Let's look at it again briefly. The ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. So the ten kings rise, the ten global entities arise that form this global government, and after them, Antichrist arises. He'll be diverse from the first, and he will go to war with and subdue three of them. Now that's pretty interesting. That means he starts in opposition to the global government. 
typically what we think of as a global government is this is this is going to be antichrist this is him you know he's behind all this and and you know we're, we're identifying all of this and we're saying yep that's antichrist and i and it and it, klaus schwab that's antichrist right or or whoever and if you don't know who klaus schwab is that's okay but world economic german guy but but evil okay but but we we tend to look around and we see things like that and we think oh that's that's going to be it critical here for us to see is that antichrist comes after the ten kings have already come into being after antichrist comes he will take over the existing global government but i don't think he starts it but from that point on he will control it he starts by cutting putting down those three kings and then begins to take control of the whole thing militarily restating that different words antichrist will initially oppose the global government and then he'll take control of it, take it over completely, make himself the head. Why well, mention that? This is where it gets really interesting. And we can begin to see into some of Satan's intrigues here, some of Satan's purpose. This is, this is a lot of speculation on my part. I'm trying to be biblically accurate with it, but you weigh it and, and evaluate it for, for what you hear and what you think yourself. You seek the Lord about this. Believers at the time at that time will be the target of great satanic deception rob and i were talking just before class this morning everything is about deception now i saw some some jake tapper i saw, saw a cnn guy i saw him talking to the congresswoman Yana presley this week on on, on tv and he said well, well Ms. congressman woman presley says what about the this 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 all these people coming in across the southern border he says he says and yet you you mayorkas you know head of uh, um what, what's what is it who's what's mayorkas head of oh Homeland Security. Yeah, thank you. I need the help. I need a lot of help. He, Marcus says, we don't have, we don't have, a, the border's secure. We just have a humanitarian crisis. Oh, we're switching words. And he, he and Presley, and Presley says, she says, the border is secure. The border is secure. Well, you can look at six million people coming in over the border and know it's not secure, right? And he said, and Jake Capper speaks like this. He says, what, how can you say the border is secure? She says, the board, this is a democratic talking point. She says, the border is secure. We have a humanitarian crisis. And in other words, we're not being invaded by all these people going across the border illegally. We're not, it's, it's a humanitarian issue. And so we're not calling it an invasion or, or any of these other things. We're simply saying we've got a humanitarian crisis and people we need to love and care for. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> this is deception. This is, this is word twisting. This is deception. This is characterizing our age. It characterizes everything we do. So be believers at that time will be targets of satanic deception. That's us. We will be the targets of this. Believers living now. There's a danger here that believers will see Antichrist oppose that, that ten kingdom government and war against it. And then believers like you and I will maybe not so well versed in a scripture. Maybe just say the average guy in the average church. We'll look at that and say, wow, look what he's doing. He's going against this evil, this evil global government. He's going against all this stuff that's, that's fighting against everything we believe in. He's going against this government that's trying to destroy America, that's trying to change our culture. And then they will think, maybe that's the Savior. Maybe that's Jesus Christ coming again. And it's not like I heard all these people saying about the end times. No, maybe that's the Savior because he's opposing all the things that are opposing us. That's the great deception I see happening. In the past, and I want you to help me here. Oh, we got, we're out. Ah, we have three minutes. In the past, we've had a lot of national and regional antichrists. People tend to find antichrist in their local society, right? Wherever you're living. Name the name the name the face. Hitler. Hitler. All right. I imagine many believers in Germany at that time thought Hitler's the Antichrist. Name the face. Mussolini. Well, I got one here. Benito Mussolini. And I imagine in, in, in Italy during this, during the fascist World War II, many people identified him as Antichrist. Who? Mao yeah. Zedong. All right. You think believers in China tended to think that Mao Zedong was the Antichrist? I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. What about this guy? Anybody know him? Paul Pot. Paul, who said Paul Pot? Good for you. All right. 
The killing fields in Cambodia, millions of Cambodians killed trying to build trying to build socialism in Cambodia, communism. Many people, reformers, have, have, have seen every pope as antichrist with good reason because he put Christians they put Christians to death. I, I won't name him because he's just representative of all of them. And who's this guy? Nero. Nero. You bet. You can bet your life that believers living during the time of Nero, while he was setting Christians on fire and lighting up his garden parties with the burning bodies of Christians, they saw him as the Antichrist. But they weren't. They were a little Antichrist, but they weren't the Antichrist. There's coming an actual Antichrist that's not going to be regional, not national. We'll have a global Antichrist, and that's the one we're going to be talking about. We, I went a few minutes over. Let's pray, and we'll, we'll pick up. Then this will fall, be followed by a global Antichrist. I want to show you how I think this is going to fall out. A lot of this is my own speculation, but that's all I've got to offer right now. Let's talk about global government and what it's going to mean. First of all, we've got phase one. That's where we are now. The Ten Kings are forming, I believe, in some way right now. We don't know who they are. We're, I just got through speculating. Maybe two of them would be Hamas and, and Hezbollah. Don't know. But there's going to be a time just before the seven years begin when these Ten Kings finally come together. They won't be real powerful. They won't be real, real united together in, in any sense at this point because they're going to be united, but not yet. Let's see where this goes. I'll show you what I mean on the chart. We've got the 10 kings that have to form. This could be in a matter of days. It could be in a matter of months. It could be years. I don't know. We're not told. We just know that before the seven years start, the 10 kings have to come together. Following that, we begin the seven years, Daniel's 70th week. Seven years, seven, Daniel's 70th week. <coughs> During that period of time, Antichrist will be present and 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 working on the earth. You say, well, he must be alive here too then, right? Yes, he would be, but he's not significant yet. Once the seven years starts, he's significant. And, and whether or not he'll be identifiable, probably identifiable, but not for sure until we see him reveal himself as, as, uh, as a false god in the, in the temple in the midpoint. So phase one is the ten kings coming together in some way some kind of an organization or a loose organization or confederation. Then the seven years begin with Antichrist present on the earth. Notice, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Right here is what Kim was talking about. This is where the Bible says that Antichrist will make, will confirm a covenant with many. Some people say it's a peace treaty. Some people say it's the, it's, the, it's the revitalization of the Mosaic Covenant, the resurrection of the Mosaic Covenant, which is where I tend to fall. But whatever he's doing, he's going to make a covenant with many. And oh, I'm ahead of myself again, so we'll stop right there. Next, well, we'll call that phase two. The first three and a half years, then, of the, tip, the seven years, will be when Antichrist consolidates his power, goes to war against some of the ten kings, and consolidates them into a government that he can that he can begin to rule. He will be the strong man. He'll be popular. He'll be he'll be looked at as a as a leader, as a rescuer. If you're a Christian living at this time, you say, "Well, I don't think we'll be there as Christians." Fine. If you don't think we'll be here, that's fine. But there will be Christians who get saved during that time. You have to allow that, and they'll be there. I think we'll all be there as long as we're alive. But but you, during this period of time, we'll look at him as sin. We'll say, wow, here we had this oppressive government, and he went to war against it. And he's making himself a friend to Israel. He's confirmed a covenant with Israel. He's gone to, gone to war against the people that were persecuting us. He's against them. Well, who is this guy? Could it be... Could it really be? Could we have misunderstood Bible eschatology? And we'll be... This is the deception that's, that, could, that could come. Could we have misunderstood Bible eschatology and this is really the Messiah? People that are not up on the scriptures like you are at this point, from Revelation and Daniel and Thessalonians as we've gone through those, could easily be fooled at a time like this. It's, it's a dangerous time. Following that, the ten kings now, that government that he's taken control of, we're going to get into some detail on that, becomes a theocracy, a rule by God, but not the true God, but the false God. 
Antichrist himself. When he stands in the temple and he says, I'm God, worship me. And all the Jews particularly fall in line and say, you rescued us, you got us out of our troubles. And maybe what we're seeing this weekend is the beginning of those troubles. Don't know. I, I could see it as a possibility. I wouldn't even speculate that it is the case. But it's interesting to look at. It has to be interesting to look at. But he raises himself and says, I'm your God. I'm the one you've been looking for. And they say, boy, he did. He did put down the Muslim nations. He did bring things together. He did let us build the temple. He did He did make peace. And he did He did all this stuff. And he's saying, we got the sacrifice, official system back. Everything's here. Maybe he's the one. He's the Messiah. Why did the Jews re re uh, reject Christ? One of the big reasons was because he didn't lead a military revolt against Rome and make himself king. They didn't like him. This one will. This one will do that. He'll do the things that they want him to do, and he'll be very powerful. Following that, we get into phase three. Now it's a theocracy. Now it's a theocracy. This is when the Bible says, Matthew 24, then shall be great tribulation, it says, after he presents himself as king, as, as God in the temple. Then shall be great tribulation. This is when the tribulation actually begins. That's the first time the word tribulation is used in the scripture, in this, in this context. Great tribulation begins, and the wrath of, well, we're, at some point in this, the wrath of God begins to fall, because God will cut the great tribulation short, and rain down, rain down all of his judgments, the trumpet and bowl judgments on the earth, all during that seven years. Interesting to think about now, those ten kings are surviving all the way through. All the way through. I'm going to repeat this as we look at the scriptures on this, but they're surviving all the way through. That basic government structure <coughs> stays intact for the whole time. And it will until the Lord Jesus returns at the Battle of Armageddon and puts most of them out of commission. You say most of them, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Not all of them, not not right away. It's very interesting. There's a lot going on here. Any questions on what I just said? Yes. John. Explain the Mosaic covenant, covenant and how that would be. I will. I'm, a, I'm about to get into that in the lesson. We'll, we'll talk about that. Be patient with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, moving on. So, that's the danger point. Phase one. That's the danger point for... for for Christian hangers on who are not really Christian, but they kind of understand the Christian message, maybe they don't understand much, and it's very dangerous for them. And it's it's dangerous for uninformed believers also, who who will look in the Antichrist and say, Wow, maybe this is the Messiah, maybe this is the one, maybe this really is Jesus, maybe this is the second coming. The Lord Jesus warned that there's going to be many false Christs. If, he, if he, they say, I'm going to go out in the desert, don't go out in the desert. If they say he's in the secret room, don't go to that secret room. They're all phony. They're all phony. He says, when you want, if you want to know where I am, you'll know when you see me coming on the clouds with the angels of God from heaven in, 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 in my glory. That's when you'll know where I am. But he says, those will be false. That, so that will be a great danger point for many people. People will look at the Antichrist and they'll see him as a hero and a liberator. I've, okay, I've... I borrowed this clip. I don't watch. I don't watch this series on Netflix or wherever it is. But I thought this is a very appropriate clip to show. And imagine a guy coming into the, into the situation like this. You people should be thinking that I am who and what I am because you need me. You need me to save you. Who possibly can? You're not the real heroes. You're not the real heroes. I'm the real hero. 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 People will go after a guy like that. People, that's, I forget what that's, but that series is called, I don't watch it. But, but people will go after a guy like that. We want heroes. We want people, we want deliverers. We want people to come and rescue us. And it won't matter who he is at one point or another. We'll, we'll, people will just say, fall in line and say, that's the guy. That's the one I'm trusting. Very scary. John MacArthur, I was listening to him yesterday, on, uh, he started to go through the book of Revelation, and he says he considers Revelation the most comforting book in the New Testament. There was a lot of laughter from the audience, you know, because it's all full of judgments and everything. It's the one that says more about the Lord Jesus than any book in the Bible. Pro the prophetic scriptures, and particularly in, in, in Revelation, 
give us more hope, more confidence, more more knowledge about our Savior and, and His plans for, for us in this world and for, for eternity than any other book in the Bible. It is indeed a comforting book. Just an amazing way. I never heard anybody say that before, but I loved it. So our first opportunity to recognize Antichrist when he finally appears is when he shall confirm the covenant with many. Tim LaHaye, uh, a lot of these guys have always said when he signs a peace treaty with Israel, and we've, we've talked about this before, it may be that. I don't think so myself, but it may be that. I allow for that. I think it might be something else. And we've talked about that a few times. Let's look at this. The nine, Daniel 9.27, we saw this when we looked through the book of Daniel, but here's the verse. Speaking of the beast, Antichrist, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, seven years, and in the midst of the week, after three and a half years, he shall cause, notice the words, the sacrifice and the oblation, that means offerings, oblations, offerings, the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate let me break that sentence that verse down he'll confirm a covenant with the many jews at that at, 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 in a, at, at the beginning of the seven years in the middle of the seven years he'll make them stop their sacrifice and their offerings you might say what sacrifice and offerings well evidently it started back then didn't it all of a sudden it had started now he's making it stop and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. In other words, what Antichrist will do at that middle of the week will, will desolate the, the nation spiritually. He'll make it desolate. And because of the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. In other words, until the very end of the seven years, when the Lord Jesus comes back in the Battle of Armageddon, even until then, that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This is the wrath of God being poured upon the nation of Israel. That's a, that is a capsule view of what's going to happen during the seven years, all in verse 27. The key for us here that we're talking about is that the, he's going to start by confirming a covenant. Confirming a covenant. Now, we can only speculate as to whether or not we will know, you and I in this classroom, if the covenant's been confirmed. You say, well, everybody's going to know. Everybody will know. If it's a peace treaty, we'll all know. If it's this, we'll all know. Now, that seems likely to me. I think, I think we probably will, but we're not guaranteed that. What if a secret agreement is made? A secret... What if he comes in in the middle of this war that we just got started this last weekend? What if he comes in the middle of that when it gets really hot, really heavy, and nation of Israel is back on its back and they're... And they're, and they're Maybe not even succeeding. We don't know what's going to happen. But he comes, steps in, and he says, look, he says, I'm going to guarantee you here a few things. Oh, and I got to stop. I know, I know what I wanted to say earlier. Hamas has named this invasion the Al-Aqsa Flood. The Al-Aqsa Flood. Does that mean anything to you? Al-Aqsa is the name of the mosque on Temple Mount. This is all about the Temple Mount. All of it is all about the Temple Mount. The invasion, the whole operation is the all acts of flood. This I heard from the lips of the Palestinian of the of the Hamas spokesman. He says it's because Israel has been doing something to the Al-Aqsa Mosque for, for decades. And he says, and we're not going to take it anymore. I mean, the whole thing's under the authority of the Palestinian Authority. I don't know what he could be talking about. But he says, we're not going to take it anymore. It's all about Temple Mount. This is quite significant because Temple Mount is the focus of all of this war. That's not, that's not plain if you're just watching CNN and, and Vox News. You got to hear what the guy from Hamas said. We understand as believers the significance of that. Well, will we know what's, what's happened then when this, when this agreement make, is, gets made, when this con- covenant gets confirmed? Probably, but maybe not. We don't know for sure, but I think we will. But let's, let's assume that we will. Confirming the covenant is the most pro-Israel thing he could do. Uh, the ten kingdoms will go to war. With, will go to war against him. Let's say confirming the covenant covenant means, as I believe it does, that it's not, it's not a peace treaty, but that he says, Jews, you can resume temple sacrifices. 
that presumes that there's going to be a temple there. There's going to be an altar. There's going to be a burnt a burnt off an altar a burnt offering. There's going to be a laver. There's going to be a there's going to be a holy place. There's going to be showbread. There's going to be an altar of incense. There's going to be there's going to be a, a the, the menorah the, 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 the lampstand and beyond that's going to be the ark of the covenant. Whether they've regained, regained that or not yet, we don't know. But all that's got to be in place some way. It could just be a tent when they start, like the tabernacle in the wilderness. That's all it takes. We know they've got the furniture all made already. If he confirms that covenant with the Jews at that time, is this interesting? It really is, isn't it? If he confirms the covenant with the Jews at that time, that's what they've been waiting for. We're going to say more about that. That'll, that'll confirm in their minds that this is the Messiah we've waited for. If he does that, the ten kingdoms will all go to war against him. Every one of them will be against him. Let's talk about them. How powerful is this ten king government? How powerful is it? Here's what Daniel 7.23 says about the fourth beast, where these ten kings come from. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. This is a time of war. And these ten king coalition, ten kingdom coalition, will go to war, and they'll have, wind up going to war against Antichrist himself. It's they're, they're strong enough to tread down the whole earth, break it in pieces. This what could happen right now to cause such a government to come in being? I made this slide before the war started, and I so now I wish I'd changed the order of my pick, my pick list. Then, all right, I'll show you what I mean. What could make this happen right now to make a ten kingdom government like this come into being? One thing would be climate change. Let's talk about climate change, folks. King Charles in England says, you know, we're, we're willing to reduce the population of the world to stop co- climate change. That's his take on it. What a nutcase. <laughs> okay, what a nutcase. But, but, and then Joe Biden and the green people all in, America, in, in the U.S. government, they'd go with that. You know the only country that probably wouldn't buy into that is China. They don't care what they do to their, their environment. Talk to a guy that lived in Beijing, and every time I took a shower, I'd sneeze and cough up all this black stuff out of my lungs every day because you're breathing coal dust all day long. But the, but most of the world is all excited about climate change. If we could make cli- if they made climate change the issue, it wouldn't take much to bring these ten kings together on a single on a single issue. What about a pandemic? We saw that work. You couldn't go to Walmart unless you unless you gave them permission to unless you washed your hands and wore a mask and and if you didn't have a mask they'd give you a mask and all you know we just went through all that and the whole world fell into line right everybody but a few churches that uh, that were honest and and serving in obedience to the Lord Jesus because Christ is the head of the church by the way in our in our FBI report. I had some. I did some funny articles. I think they're funny, <laughs> but but one of them that's not so funny is in the second page where it says United Methodist problems. Be sure you read that today, because the United Methodists are having all kinds of trouble about going independent and getting out of the United Methodist churches and uh, United Methodist denomination because they don't believe in making homosexuals bishops and so forth, and, and they're trying to get out and take their property with them, and they're, and they're not able to do it because they've got a mixed-up church organization where they've, where they've got a bunch of guys that are the head of the church instead of Jesus Christ. That's the whole problem. They're not New Testament churches. Big problem, uh, just refer to the article. But it could be pandemic. It could be the threat of war, and here we are now. Here we are now. Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran. Iran says they're in support of, 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 the, of the invasion. Pakistan, with nearly 300 nuclear, nuclear warheads, is in, char- is in, is in favor of the, the, the invasion. You have something, Carlene? Okay. Is in, char- is, is in favor of the invasion. Gutter is in tr- favor of the invasion. Saudi Arabia is in favor of the invasion. They're all lining up now, and it wouldn't take much for 10 of them to come together and be very powerful. Right now, the Arab, the Arab world is kind of disunified. Shiite, Sunni, different countries. Wouldn't take much for them to come together around this, and we see them actually doing it. Threat of war. Threat of famine. That's last on my list, but that could be one. Lots of things. My point here is lots of things is, could, be, could come together to make this all happen. We don't know what, the, what, the, what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. The result of it is that Antichrist will reshape that global government into his own government. He will make it his. And here's how he'll do it. I think I got the slide on that. Verse 10, uh, chapter 
chapter 9, verse 24 of Daniel. And then the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And we're going to have to end on this slide today. But he shall subdue three kings. Antichrist will take three of those ten kings, and he will go to war against them and humiliate them. That's what the Hebrew word there means. He will humiliate them and bring them down to the ground. He will reshape the global government into his own government. And immediately after he does that, the other seven will fall into line. And he will be in charge. Next week we'll pick up, we will use it to promote the worship of himself at the midpoint. Now next week we'll, see, we'll start right here. The key to understanding what Antichrist is doing. He's going to be mimicking the Lord Jesus Christ in order to deceive the whole world. And we're going to go through the prophecies about the Lord Jesus and, and, and show this. Yes, Judy? Are you going to put this online? It'll be online when I get my web page finished. There may be a... Will it be called Global Government? No, it'll be, it'll be called uh, the Prophetic Calendar. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell everybody. I haven't got that done yet. Okay. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the Word of God. We thank you that you said to us, Behold, I have told you all these things in advance. And you have. We, are, we, we, we thank you that you've made us wise concerning the things that are going on in the world. And we pray that you'll make us wise in our Christian walk, circumspect in, their, in our lives, and, and, and careful about how we live our lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. We know, Lord, that we're at a time, if we ever had been, when we don't have the, the privilege of just being fooling around about being Christians. But it's time to be serious and, and recognize what's coming on the world and be ready to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ when the serious oppression comes and it becomes persecution. We pray that we'll be faithful at that time and we'll be willing to stand even to the death, even under blood, for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray in his name. Amen. God bless you all. All right. Loud enough? Everybody hearing you okay? We got a crowd of people in the back. Look at that. We got a full house today. This is pretty cool. You know, we've got people that will not come into this class. Because, this is serious because they are claustrophobic and they can't stand this room. This, it's true. I've, I've, I've been told that more than once. And they get, they get all nervous. I, I hope that with all this buying, and, buying property and all the stuff that we're talking about doing, that we can get a bigger classroom. That's what I'm hoping for. One that's, one that's not made like a... What? Oh my God. I <laughs> like a whatever it's like. <laughs> like a pencil. <laughs> when when we were first when we were first you know originally we weren't gonna have this this inset coming into the room. It was just gonna be a straight room all the way back. And one day I came in and they'd build all this in and they'd say, Oh yeah, well the sound room sound room needed more room. So you know, we we didn't say anything. We just figured it's okay with you. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> one of those things. Okay. One it wasn't okay with me, but <laughs> Hold on. Hold on a second. I gotta remember to do this every week because I we get glare. I get glare. You say off my head, right? <laughs> no. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up from the slide we were on last week. We're talking about the global government that's about to come on the earth, and I'm sure we'll be here soon. Everything is shaping up for an impressive global government that wants to take control of individuals and control everything. Uh, global currency, digital currency, all the stuff's in the works. And with what we've got going on in Israel and, and Hamas right now, we talked about it last week and the week before, but particularly last week. Because last week when we came in, Hamas had just got done attacking Israel, right? And I asked the question, okay, everybody knows Israel's at war. What country are they at war with? And there's no country they're at war with. They're at war with, a, with an organization. And that plays very well into the whole idea of the 10 kings in the last global government. Because we don't know if those kings will be uh, national entities or, or, or geographical entities or, or, or uh, I. I I, entities of an ideology like like Islam or a religion or or a mix of all of those they're going to come together they're going to be they're going to they're going to form fairly rapidly I think it could take years before the, before they they form but but I think when they do form they'll form very rapidly and it could be just a matter of days so we'll when when that happens so we'll see how it all shapes out how it all works out and before I forget 
I've spent a lot of time this last week. What, Beth? She was doing. She was giving me. <laughs> now is it better? Is it better now? What? Yes, good. Say it out loud. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Okay. All right. Everybody's gonna break. Get up and go now. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for that. So. So. There, there they go. So, I spend a lot. Of, goodbye, everybody. So, so, I spent a lot of time last week working on the on our on our on our my web page, which I've neglected for like twelve years. Let me just show you kind of what I'm doing. I've got a I've got a home page. You'll love this. Well, no one's going to love it. I I'm just going to show you because it's on here. There's my there's my main web page, and over here on the lower left hand corner is the FBI class. See it down there? Of course you don't because it's too small. That's it there. And if you hit on the FBI class, it's jfabian.com. So there's the FBI. I've got a special page for the FBI Bible class, and down there on the FBI Bible class, I'm going to slowly, slowly, one at a time. I'm going to be putting in all the stuff that we've done videos on. For instance, here's here's the book of Daniel, verse by verse. All of the videos we did on Daniel, I've, I've got them in a new format. They're going to be there. Our study on First and Second Thessalonians we did in 2021, they're on there. The one we're doing now, God's prophetic calendar, that's on there. It's just a matter of clicking the button. Let me give you an example of what we got here. So they'll look like this, and I, I say, you say, well, I already, I don't need to see that. I was, I was here in the class. We get a lot of requests from people that, that watch it who are not in this class. Maybe, maybe they're claustrophobic. Maybe they don't like me. I get that. <laughs> maybe, maybe they're, I, maybe I scare them. I don't, I don't know why I would. But they're, they're going to be all down there, and I've only got one on there right now because rather than having. Global government part one, part two, part three, and three different videos. I'm going to wait till we finish global government, maybe not today, and put it all into one long video, which may be like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. But that's what it'll be. So on the, the way you navigate this is on the left, you'll see we have an introduction, which we, which we have here, and that's, and that's up. Then we have global government, and it, I almost pressed on this. <laughs> that really, that's really smart, Jay. <laughs> so I just say that's coming. Whatever you press on, <laughs> whatever you press on, it's going to be it's going to be over on the right hand side, and uh, it'll show up there. So, for instance, then we press introduction. There it is, and here uh, there's the video from the from the introduction for our for our series that we're doing now. Now I'll stop it because that. Guitar is going to drive me crazy, but everything we did is in there. Okay, so and that's why Gus reminds me every Sunday morning to turn on my recorder because because otherwise I wouldn't have the the audio to go with it. Okay, having said all that, back to our jfabian.com, j a y f a u b i o n dot com. Here's what we wound up last week. Was that too fast that I went through all that? I hope not. Everybody knows about web pages. Although, you know, that's a really tedious thing to, to do web pages and put up videos and make all the links and blah, 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 blah. I've, I've spent, I bet I spent three full days just, just doing what you got there. It's okay, because once, when I'm dead next week, week after, who knows? <laughs> I'm, I'm old enough to be dead anytime. You know, when I'm dead, all that stuff's still going to be out there. I, I love the thought of that, you know. <laughs> He, the, he being dead yet speaketh, I've, I've always enjoyed that, that idea. Not the being dead part. <laughs> Although, to, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, right? Yeah, I don't, okay, all right, I'm not complaining, all right? All right, here we are. Talking about the Antichrist and, and reshaping, reshaping the world to fit, his, to fit his model of global government. Uh, he will reshape the existing global government. We expect to see a global government on the earth uh, before he arrives and is recognized. He, if he's alive, fine, but we don't know where he is or what he's doing at that point. We expect to see a global oppressive government, and we're certainly seeing that. Look what's happening in North America. Uh, Trudeau is, is li literally just a, a dictator up there with a, with a progressive, oppressive government. Uh, regime there in Canada and remember the truckers strike during COVID and everything people people are losing their rights left and right in Canada same things happening here 
Same thing. We look at who would have dreamed that our that our government would be run by a president who is so inept and so out of touch with everything that his wife has to lead him on and off of a platform just so he can find his way. Who's running the government? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. We just being realistic. We we're living in a in a really weird time. When when when. When riots can take place in the streets, nobody gets arrested, and if they do, they're out in 24 hours. Uh, they can break, they, they can have flash mobs breaking into buildings and stores and taking everything out, and nobody ever, nobody ever goes to jail for more than a, for more than three days. It's it's crazy, but if you but if you pray outside a pro life center, you can go to jail for a long time. Or it, it's just it, everything's just turned on its head right now. This is where this is where a progressive where, where an oppressive government uh, where you begin to see a really oppressive government. When we lived in China, once you got off the plane in China, in, in, in Red China and in, in the People's Republic, you felt the oppression as soon as you got there. It was tangible. You could feel it. And when you left and got back to America, you felt the release of all that. We're, we're, we're becoming that way now and, 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 and to a large degree. There's things you know, there's things you know that at work or in, in public places that you can't say anymore. And you say, well, I could say them. I could open my mouth, my mouth and use the words. Yeah, and you know what'll happen, right? You'll you'll have people, you'll have Starbucks employees throwing coffee at you, or, or, or something's going to happen. And you'll have be you'll be burned on Facebook, or you'll or you'll be arrested for this or that for being intolerant. Listen, uh, we had this whole idea of hate crimes, where where the, the very thoughts of your head are now criminalized because you're not allowed to have an, a contrary opinion about things. This is a tyrannical, oppressive time that we're entering into, and it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. That is the government that we're that we're coming up on right here from the scriptures. We know it's going to come, and that's the one that will come in opposition to the state of Israel, opposition to believers like you and I. And we're going to, and everybody's going to be looking for someone to, to, to help us, to save us. Enter Antichrist, who will come in and fight that oppressive government. We say, well, I thought that was him. No, that's 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 a that's a this is a scheme. He'll come in, he'll fight that oppressive government, and people all the world around the world will say, oh, he's the savior. He's the savior. He's the one. He's the one that's going to get us out of all this mess. And many and many ignorant Christians are liable to fall for that who don't know anything about Bible prophecy, don't understand eschatology, <coughs> eschatology, study of last things, which is what we're doing here. And they'll say, maybe that's the Messiah. Maybe that's him. And, and the, the deception that comes upon the world will be so great that many will fall. That's the great apostasy that we're warned about. Having said all that, this is the introduction for this slide, <laughs> for our review slide. So, here's what will happen. We've got the eighth evil empire coming on the world now. It's, it's the seventh, but it's going to be the eighth, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. Daniel 9.24, and the ten horns out of this kingdom, that's the ten kings that will comprise this global government, are ten kings that shall arise. They'll just come up, and another shall arise after them, Antichrist, and he shall be diverse from the first. He won't be like the first ten. And he shall subdue three kings. He'll instantly go to war and subdue three kings. Three of those ten kings. Ten kingdoms, ten entities, ten treaty organizations, ten trade partners, blocks, uh, whatever it may be. Maybe it's going to be, a, maybe it's going to be a Saudi Arabia, Assyria, uh, Egypt, or a combination of those. Or something else, or a Hamas. We don't know, but he will subdue three of them. And he will reshape that government into his own government. He will use it to promote the worship of himself. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about Antichrist by looking at the Lord Jesus. You say, whoa, how does that work? How is the Antichrist like the Lord Jesus? Antichrist means antithesis of Christ, the opposite of Christ, a substitute, a phony, a fake. He is a fake Messiah. To do that, let's look at the, what I consider the key to understanding him. And let's look at prophecies related to the Lord Jesus himself and how Antichrist will mimic those, those prophecies and, and take that and make it about him. You say that's like somebody coming into a job and somebody's been doing a good into a workplace and somebody's been doing a really good job for 10 years and some guy comes in and a new guy and takes all the credit and gets promoted, right? It's exactly the same thing, except worse. So the key to understanding Antichrist. Let's look at some prophecies about the Messiah himself, the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, will physically rule this world. 
He will physically rule this world. And we'll look at the number of scriptures here. Psalm 110, verses 5 and 6. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. When is that? When is, when is that? When will he strike through kings in the day of his wrath? What do we see? Yes. At the second coming, at Armageddon, right? When he when he comes out of glory and riding that white horse and he destroys destroys those armies that are in the valley of Megiddo, right? He'll destroy them. So the Lord at his thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He will destroy the enemies of God. He will physically rule the world. Antichrist looks at that and says, I'll do that. I'll do it first. And again, he won't be able to. He won't be able to. So Isaiah 60, verses 11 and 12, same subject. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. This is talking about the New Jerusalem in, in, in the millennium. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut by day, shut day or no night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. There's coming a time when the Lord Jesus will rule from the holy hill of Mount Zion in Israel, and, and all the nations that will not serve him will be destroyed. The nations will still exist, but they'll bring their they'll bring their, their worship to the Lord Jesus. He'll rule the world. And Christ says, I can do that. And he'll fake it. And he'll fake it. And the world will say, eh, he's, he's doing what was what it was what it said here, just not with the way we expected. Daniel 2.44 And in the days of these kings, what kings? The ten kings that we've been talking about in this study. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Who's setting up this kingdom? God will set it up, not Antichrist. God will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So these nations come into the millennium, and they still exist, and, and now, now Almighty God sets up his kingdom that shall never be destroyed, and eventually all these nations kind of just go away because there's only one kingdom left, and that's the kingdom of heaven. We look forward to that. And Antichrist says, I can do that. I can set up my kingdom in Jerusalem, and I can, I can, uh, I can rule, and I'll bring it all together, and it'll be about me. Again, Revelation chapter two, verses twenty-six and twenty-seven. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. When the nations come into the millennium, there there'll still be some rebellion there. There'll still be some resistance. He will rule them with a rod of iron, not with a soft hand, not with an ease, not with a feather, but with a rod of iron, and bring and bring discipline to the world. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I Christ says, I know how to rule with a rod of iron. I know how to beat people into submission. That's Satan's way. That's Satan's way. He's saying, I'll, I'll do it, and he'll do it, and he'll and he'll he'll mimic the Lord Jesus in that. The Messiah will physically rule the world. Revelation twelve five. Speaking of the 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 it's a it's a it's a it's a symbol where you have the woman standing upon the standing upon the sun and the moon and the stars and the stars around her around her head and the twelve stars representing the tribes of Israel. She brought forth a man child that was the Lord Jesus, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God to his throne. So. There again, we have that picture of the Lord Jesus ruling all the nations. And Antichrist will jump to mimic that. The Messiah will make Jerusalem the capital of the world. He says that in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. We'll get a couple. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. And shall be exalted above the, hill, all, above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. That'll be Jerusalem. That is his holy hill of Mount Zion. Mount Zion. And Christ says, Jerusalem? I like Jerusalem. I'll take it over. It'll be mine. Isaiah 18, 7. 
In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled. Imagine that. Now we're talking about people scattered and peeled. <coughs> Beaten up. Jews and, and believers all around the world, but particularly the nation of Israel here is in view. And from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, a nation meted out and trotted underfoot, whose lands the rivers have spoiled, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, Mount Zion. There it is again, Mount Zion. Everything is centering around Mount Zion in the, in the city of Jerusalem. Zechariah 14, 16. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came up against Jerusalem, Armageddon, shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of his tabernacles. And so there, here's the idea built in here, in, enclosed in that, that everything is going to be about Jerusalem. They're coming up against Jerusalem, and Jerusalem being the center of everything. If you turn on the news today, what's the center of everything on the news? It's all about Jerusalem, right? You would think, you would think that just a small nation in the Middle East, you know, like, 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 you know, you got Saudi Arabia, you got Jordan, they're about the same size as Jerusalem. Saudi Arabia, much larger, uh, as, as Israel, rather. Saudi Arabia is much larger. You say, well, what, why does it always have to be newsworthy? Because of all the hatred, the hatred of the Jews. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope there's none of that in here because it's ungodly and it's wicked. But that's, that's, this is the miracle of God that, that Israel exists even at all as a nation today. And they're still there. And God brought, God brought them back together so he could judge them in the land. So, uh, as I say, Mandy Christ will look at that and say, Jerusalem, gotcha. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to make it my capital. Next, next one. The Messiah will begin making temple sacrifices again. I, I probably misworded that. The Messiah will begin allowing temple, sac temple sacrifices again, requiring them. Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 18. This is all about the millennial temple and, and, and all that Ezekiel's talking about there, talking about the dimensions and the size and uh, dimensions and size, the dimensions of the temple and, and, and what it'll look like, how it's going to be made. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith the Lord God, these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon during the millennium. Yes, there will be animal sacrifices during the millennium in the temple. Antichrist says, I'll take care of the temple business. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll make a covenant with them. I'll reinstitute the sacrifices. And eventually, I'll tell them I'm God and they'll worship me. Hey, Jerry. Yes, sir. Is animal sacrifice practiced anywhere in the world? Today? Yes. Yeah, the, 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 the Muslims do it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, Beth has a cousin named Scott. Reeves and uh, for a long time he raised he raised goats and he said that he said they he sold them to uh, to the to the the Muslims and their you know, Isna and people like that then they would take them and use them for animal sacrifice right here in Indiana still doing it Egypt and everywhere oh yeah from Egypt. are you really it's not not uncommon is it yeah 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 this excellent sacrifice so yeah. And, and, and that's not going to go, the mosaic idea, the mosaic version of animal sacrifice will exist during the millennium. Jeremiah 33, 16 and 18. I skipped verse 17 just for content. I had to get it all on one screen. In those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. Over this, when would this be in the millennium? And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. You say, where do you want to go this summer on vacation? Hey, let's go to Jerusalem. You know, the Lord our righteousness. That's that's the that's, that's Jerusalem. People think of it in that way, not like a boiling pot or a or a or a or a like like we think of it today, but a, but a, but a, a place where we just think of it as the Lord our righteousness. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man from me. In other words, they won't lack a man from me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. So that will be characteristic of the temple there in Jerusalem. The Messiah will set up a worldwide pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Isaiah 66.20 a pilgrimage means you're going to leave one place and go and travel with with a with a, with a religious spiritual sense to it to another place to do something right. 
And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations, upon horses and in chariots and litters, upon mules, upon swift beasts, any way you can get there. To my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel unto the house of the Lord. So worldwide, people will, will be going, begin making pilgrimages to Jerusalem. You know that every year uh, there's a huge pilgrimage to, to Mecca, you know, by many of the Muslims. And they go to, what's it called, the Hadith? I don't remember what it's called. But they, they, they go to that big black black cube there. And uh, that'll be nothing compared to compared to this. And and uh, no doubt, no doubt, Antichrist will look at it and mimic it because he will have made Jerusalem his capital for as long as he can hold it. Merchants from the sea will bring him goods, Messiah, silver and gold. Here's the scripture, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 9. Surely the isles will wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first, 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 <laughs> first. To bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. Jerusalem will become a wealthy city, a, a, and Israel a wealthy nation, because all the, all the world will bring their riches into it, because that's where Jesus is. And our Christ will say, I'll make it the center of commerce, I'll make it the center of everything, and I'll be wealthy, and I'll have it all. The Messiah will sit in the temple personally and accept worship. Isaiah 66, 23. It shall come to pass from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Eventually, the world will turn and it will all, they'll all, they will all make their way to Jerusalem and worship before the Lord Jesus Christ. And that Christ will say, well, you know what he's going to say. The Messiah, the Messiah's forerunner will be the real Elijah. Malachi 4, 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. We know that the day of the Lord is, is presaged by signs in the signs of the sun and the moon turning sun going dark the moon turning to blood stars from heaven falling upon the earth and people run and they hide themselves in the rocks and the caves and say who can save us from the wrath of the lamb for the who can save us from him that sitteth on the throne and because the day of his wrath has come right that's the day of the lord that is, that begins the day of the lord well the forerunner will be Elijah for all that. And you say, well, how will that be? I think he'll be one of the two witnesses that we talked about and I won't go into detail now. The Messiah will defeat Assyria and Egypt. Now, this is pretty interesting. If you look at... I bet it's interesting for you. <laughs> if you look at a map today, you've got, you've got Gaza. Well, I don't know. I should... I, should, I, won't, I, can't, don't go, I, I can't do the detail. Okay, we'll, we'll look at this later. I got detail on it later. But Assyria is who? Assyria is who? It's Iraq. Nineveh is encapsulated. The old city of Nineveh is encapsulated in the Iraqi city of Mosul. That's where Nineveh is, was, right? That's where Jonah went, right? I've often wondered, okay, I'm just, I hate to do when I do this. My mind's active on this. I often wonder how Jonah got from his ship all the way to Nineveh. That's not a short travel, you know, not a short distance. Here he is, he's been, he's been vomited out of this out of this great fish. And somehow he makes his way across across all that land to Nineveh. That's not a short trip. But he got there. You ever wonder what Nineveh, what Jonah looked like after he was had been in the belly of a fish with the stomach acid and everything? I think he was I think everyone that saw him withdrew from him because his flesh would have been burned. I, I, I imagine, I'm thinking this is very possible. He would have been a, a sight to see, like a walking dead man. And no wonder people paid attention to him when he spoke. That's just my own speculation, and I'm way off track now. <laughs> but, but Antichrist, we know, will subdue three kings. Subdue three kings. Wouldn't it be interesting if he came against Iraq and Egypt to settle this war we're in now? I'm not saying he will. This could be it. Could be it. If he came to war against Egypt and 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 uh, and in Iraq and probably Iran would be the third to settle this whole thing, and the, all the nations of the world said, "Oh, this is the guy. He's solving the Middle East problem," and all the Jews say, oh. "You can see it happening." 
It's, it's, we can see the possibilities just as clear as day right now. You say, you think that's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. It's a possibility. It'll be like that if it's not that, right? And Antichrist will look and subdue three kings and he'll say, I'll, 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 I'll do that in, in advance. Uh, I'll, I'll, just, uh, I'll just take them away I'll, I'll, and I'll get people to, to worship me. <coughs> Zephaniah 2.13 and he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. That's Iraq. Zephaniah 2.5 uh, The Lord Messiah will defeat the coastlands. Moab, Ammon, the Cushites, all those, all those along the coastlands where the Philistines were. Ashdod, Ashkelon, all those cities that you read about in the news today. Those are Philistine cities. They're part of Israel, or proper Israel right now. And they're considered... By the way, this term Palestinian, do you know that before before the Balfour Declaration, before the, before the partitioning took place after World War II of, of, of that province of Palestine, that Jews and Arabs were all Palestinians? <laughs> Everybody who lived there was a Palestinian. So it's, it's kind of a misnomer to say only Arabs are Palestinians. Jews were Palestinians too. The partitioning made a difference because the nation was made then and, and Jordan was formed as that second state. They say that everyone says they went to a two-state solution, right? Well, Jordan was one and, and Israel was the other. And it just didn't work out real well because, because Israel was at war immediately with all the Arabs. But it's just the Messiah, when he comes, will defeat the coastlands, Moab, Ammon, and Kushites. Here we are in Zephaniah 2.5. Woe unto the inhabitants of the sea coast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, land of the Philistines. I will even destroy thee, that there shall be no inhabitant. Antichrist will accomplish that and bring his own kind of peace to the, to the region in order to gain the worship and obedience of the nations around him, particularly Israel. Messiah will die and be raised from death. Now this is really interesting, and we've got a whole. Se we'll do a whole session on this, so I won't go into detail. The prophecy of the Lord Jesus is, "For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell." David wrote, "Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption." Jesus was killed on the cross, literally dead for three days, and did not. His body was never corrupted, and he was raised from the dead. The scriptures say he was raised by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Father in heaven raised him from the dead. And he says, if you, if you, if you kill me I in, three days, in this body, in three days I will raise it up. And he rose it up. The entire trinity, do you see the entire Godhead raising Jesus Christ from the dead? Antichrist will mimic that when he receives the mortal wound from the sword. And then he appears, to, and then he is raised from, apparently raised from the dead. We'll spend time on talking about that. That was fulfilled in the Lord Jesus. Not, not in the Antichrist. And another one that's actually fulfilled. The Messiah will institute a new covenant. Jer this is an important verse. An important scripture. We'll spend a we'll session on this too. Behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. What was that new covenant? Well, you've got it in your Bible right now. Old Testament, New Testament. Old covenant, new covenant. That's all that means. The new covenant is the gospel. It's the grace of God. It's the new covenant he makes where he makes where he gives us hearts of flesh and writes his name upon our hearts, right? And he and the Lord our righteousness becomes written on our hearts. That's the new covenant that he makes with people where we where we are saved by grace through faith, right? Antichrist will come in and say, Jews, I'm gonna make a covenant with you. I'm gonna I'm gonna confirm the covenant with many. That's what it is. I I believe. And he'll reinstitute animal sacrifice and do something with their temple. That was fulfilled in Christ. Antichrist will mimic that. So in my estimation, Antichrist will paint himself as a liberator when he comes in, as a savior, not a conqueror. Yes, he will conquer, but he will beat down the nations that are causing all the trouble and bring himself up and put himself up on a pinnacle and show that he is the one that everybody owes their gratitude and their worship and their obedience to. He will be the one. That's probably why Revelation 17.11 says this. Speaking of the last beast empire, we had, we'll, we'll probably look at this th at least three times before we're, we're done here. But the beast that was, they, we're not talking about the Ten Kings now. We're talking about the last beast empire, which comprises the Ten Kings. The beast that was and is not 
even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. You say, what does that mean? What does that mean? The beast that was, that's the empire that was, that would have been the Roman Empire, and is not, it went away, it, the em, em, Roman Empire fell. Even he is the eighth, here it comes again in a different form. It's of the seven, it was, it was part of, it was basically the old Roman Empire, now it's something new, and he, he is up this, he is the eighth now, but he was of the seven. So it's kind of, people like to say revived Roman Empire. I don't like to say that, but, because it, it's not very Roman anymore. But it did comprise all those nations around, around the Mediterranean, and particularly all those that had control of Israel. And he goeth into perdition. He goeth into perdition. It's, 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 it's uh, suited only for the lake of fire. But that's, but that's why it says that, I think. Revelation 17, 11. He is of the eight. He is the eight. He was of the seven, but it all goes in. It's all going to hell. If you want to put it in those terms, it's all literally going to hell because the uh, Antichrist is a child of hell. <laughs> Revelation chapter 17, verses 9 to 11. Let's just read, read a little bit here. And I, got, I know I got an animation here, so let me make sure I don't miss it. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. Now, that's important that we don't just skip past that. We don't, we won't get a lot of this unless we apply our minds to it and do some study. You won't just get it by listening to me. I, I know that won't work, <laughs> okay? You get listening to me, you just get all you get is me. This is a mind that has wisdom, it requires it. So he says, you gotta do some study, you gotta have some understanding on this. Take your time, read the book of Daniel, read Revelation, read the Messi Messianic prophecies, read them for yourself. He says, this is the mind that has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. There are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. That's Antichrist, the last empire. And the beast that was and is not. Now, when John wrote this in Revelation, Rome was in power. Rome was the, was the empire, right? So the beast that was and is not. Oh, it's, it, it was, but now it's not anymore. Even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. There's that, that verse again. And the ten horns which thou sawest, now we switch from the, the, meta, the meta version of this, of the empires, to focusing on the empire, the last empire itself, that's comprised of these ten kings. He says, the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So these ten kings, these ten entities, whatever they are, right now they don't, they don't, we don't really, they're not really identifiable necessarily. Maybe some are, but we're not sure. Uh, but all of a sudden, they will become, they will come into focus. They haven't got their power yet. They haven't really got their kingdoms running yet in full strength. But they will receive power with as kings at one hour with the beast. When Antichrist is near, when he appears, they will they will be there and ready to go, and they'll get their power from him. Eventually, it devolves from Satan to the beast, Antichrist himself, and then down to these kings. Verse thirteen: They shall have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They won't work independently. They won't be like independent nation states or anything. They just do what they want and they won't be democracies. That, 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 well, they might be actually, if, as, long as, they, as long as they have a corrupt populace. But they, they'll, they'll give their power and strength unto the beast. They will literally be lackeys, slave nations, slave entities serving Antichrist. And they shall make war with the Lamb of God, with the Lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Now that's a lot to take in. So remember, here is the mind that has wisdom. Be patient with yourself as you study these things. Be patient with yourself. We don't get it all at one time. I was... I've been doing this for more than fifty years, and I'm and I'm still studying it and 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 trying to trying to get it all in my head. What have we learned? I think we'll finish this. Things don't change very much, over for the kings over the seven years. You start with ten kings, and we we and when we get to Armageddon, we still got ten kings. Those that that global government of those ten kings will be there present all the way from the beginning of the seven years all the way through and right to the end. 
the government changes greatly, though, right at the midpoint. Because at the midpoint, when Antichrist stands in the temple and says, I'm God, worship me, it becomes a theocracy. It becomes a theocracy. That's, that's really when the Eighth, eighth Empire really t- becomes obvious. Because he'll, he'll say, I'm God, worship me, and, and many of the Jews, most of the Jews, I think, probably will, and many, many of the nations will. If we believe, and here's, here's some of the danger and a bit of a warning. If we believe that all we need is an oppressive anti-God government to be in the end times, are we having one now? It's it's just a, it's just about uh, generally acknowledged that that's what we're getting right now. If we think that's all we need to be in the end times, then we are prime candidates for seeing Antichrist as the deliverer when he shows up, instead of the evil that he is. If the rest, if somebody comes in and rides on his white horse, right? Not a literal white horse, but metaphorically, rides in on his white horse and 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 delivers everybody from the oppressive government, right? They'll say, we'll say he's 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 the must be maybe he's a messiah. Christians must be wise. You should be wise. You're seeing you can I think you can see the scriptures here. You should be wise about this and you won't be fooled. We have to be we have to be have a mind that has wisdom. Seven heads, ten horns. Let's simplify. There are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, the other's not yet come, and when he cometh he must continue a short space. Five are fallen. Let's look at this quickly and then we'll finish with that. We've done today. Uh, and I'll and I'll make the video. I've got three minutes to do this. Here we've got a here we've got just a little grabbing. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Watch watch help, help me out here because I'm gonna make this interactive. What's the first head? What was the first empire in the world? Egypt. Egypt, thank you. Whoever said Egypt, you win. Okay. That was Egypt. Following Egypt, the next empire to come was Assyria. Assyria. Oh, you guys are so good. I wish I could take credit for you knowing all this. <laughs> That's right. Assyria is the next one. So there's Assyria following Egypt. Assyria has fallen now. What's next after Assyria? Babylon. Babylon. Oh, you guys. I don't need to teach this. You guys can just tell me from where you are. <laughs> okay, Babylon. Right. Following Babylon, who's next? Persia. I'll just say Persia because it's shorter. Yes, Medo-Persia. And so there's the fourth one and it has now fallen, right? There's a fifth that it says, it says five are fallen. Who followed Persia? Greece. Greece. Oh, this is wonderful. Can I take credit for you guys knowing this, please? <laughs> it'll, it'll make my day. Greece followed there. And so five are fallen. Now, one is, John says, John the Revelator. John says, one is... Who was the who was the empire in charge in John's time? Rome. Rome, exactly. And then he says, "What? There's one more to come. The other's not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And it's going to be Antichrist's empire. And it will be all about okay. So Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece are fallen. Rome still is. The other's not come yet. It's going to be all about those ten kings right there." We don't know who they are yet, but when they, when they come together, we will absolutely know who they are. Let's talk a little more about those ten kingdoms, those ten entities that are like kingdoms, or however, however we may find them. One thing they'll all have in common is they'll be against Israel. They'll all be against Israel. Consider Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. So three of the first horns of the ten were plucked up by the roots, absolutely conquered, humiliated by Antichrist. Daniel 7.24 We read this at least two or three times in this lesson. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. Let's look at this map again. Now, these crowns are scattered all over the Mediterranean. One thing we know for sure is that all these empires that have come and gone have had control over parts of the whole Mediterranean Sea. 
and also have shared control over the land of Israel. Now, I've, I've put them in various places. I think two or, two or three are probably accurate, maybe not, maybe just two. But let's consider what Antichrist is going to do. Antichrist is the little horn who comes on the scene with a mouth speaking great things. And the very first thing he does is subdue three kings. I'll bet he subdues Egypt. I estimate that he will subdue Assyria, which we know today as modern Iraq. Mosul being the city in Iraq today that encompasses the old city of Nineveh, the capital of Assyria. Then he may go and take control of Turkey. This is being recorded during the time when President Erdogan of Turkey is making a lot of noise against Israel and, and coming out in favor of the Hamas invasion of southern Israel. So maybe Antichrist will show his power by going after, after uh, Turkey. Then in one after another, he will take over the rest of the ten kings, wherever they may be. I've just randomly put them in different spots around the Mediterranean Sea. And when he has finally taken control of all ten, then he will relax his opposition to Israel and pretend to be a friend, pretend to be her Messiah. Very interesting, but it's exactly what we can expect to see. Let's look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 17. Verse 16 said, and the ten horns, so there's our context. Now verse 17. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. These kings are here for one purpose and one purpose only, to fulfill the word of God. They think they're in control. Antichrist thinks they're his. But they belong to the Lord Jesus. God has always been in control, and he remains in control today. That's our lesson on global government. We'll have more to say about it as we move through the other lessons. But for now, we'll think about next week's lesson, Antichrist's Covenant. The Covenant with Many.